Live from New Delhi, you're watching DD India News R, India's voice to the world. I'm Amrit Pal Singh. Coming up in the next one hour, last day of campaigning for India's first phase of general elections. 102 parliamentary constituencies go to polls on April 19th. Israel War Cabinet to meet again today. U.S. and EU mull fresh sanctions against Tehran. United Arab Emirates hit by the heaviest rainfall in over 75 years surpasses all records. Dubai roads shut, airport submerged. Ram Nami, the festival marking birth of Lord Ram being celebrated across India with fervor. Ayodhya witnesses celestial glory with sun rays falling on the forehead of Ram Lala's idol. Let's now get you the latest on the world's largest democratic election exercise in India. Well, all across the length and breadth of India, star campaigners of various political parties are holding back-to-back -back rallies as campaigning will end today for the first phase of general elections which are to be held on the 19th of this month. To garner support for the ruling Bharatiya Janta Party, Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed a rally in Assam's Nalbari. Prime Minister Modi said that NDA has decided to reach out to every citizen of the country and provide them with facilities they deserve. Later in the day, the Prime Minister will be addressing a public gathering in Tripura. BJP Bo Party hai, jo sabka saath, sabka vikas ke mantra par chalti hai. NDA sarkar ki yojanao mein, कोई भेदभाव नहीं होता उनका लाभ हर किसी को मिलता है अब एनडीए ने ठाना है कि देश के हर नागरिक तक पहुंचकर जिस सुविधा का वो पात्र है वो सुविधा उसे दी जाएगी आप मुझे बताइए एनडीए सरकार की योजनाओं में आपको कहीं पर भी भेदभाव का सामना करना पड़ा है भेदभाव का सामना करना पड़ा है भेदभाव का सामना करना पड़ा है and down south, India's Defence Minister and senior BJP leader Rajnath Singh is in Kerala where he addressed a public rally in uh, Kasaragod. Later, he will hold public rallies in uh, Wadakara and Kannur. Senior BJP uh, leader and Union Minister Nitin Gadkari will virtually address people in Nagpur where he is up against Congress's India Bloc candidate Vikas Thakre. Meanwhile, opposition parties are also leaving no stone unturned uh, to woo voters. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi and Samajwadi Party chief Akhilesh Yadav held a joint press conference in Uttar Pradesh, Ghaziabad today. Contesting under the banner of INDIA Bloc or uh, INDA Bloc, the uh, two uh, leaders campaigned for Samajwadi Party's candidate. Addressing the press conference, Rahul Gandhi said that instead of working on major issues, 
the BJP is busy creating distractions. Later in the day, Rahul will be holding two rallies in Mandya and Kolar cities of the southern state of Karnataka. सबसे बड़ा बेरोजगारी दूसरे नंबर पर महंगाई भागीदारी मगर बीजेपी 24 घंटा डिस्ट्रैक्शन करने में लगी रहती है ऑन द अदर हैंड कांग्रेस जनरल सेक्रेटरी हेल्थ द रोड शो इन सहारनपुर सिटी ऑफ नॉर्थ इंडियन स्टेट ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश the lone seat uh, from uttar pradesh from where the congress is in the fray in the first phase and congress supremo malik arjun kharge will be holding a public meeting in nagaland and also in uh, karnataka today he will address a uh, gathering in nagaland's dimapur and another meeting in karnataka's kolar And after winning two seats in the Rajasthan Assembly polls last year, Bahujan Samaj Party Supremo Mayawati is all set to make way for more votes. Mayawati will be holding public meetings in Rajasthan's Alwar today. And for more on uh, the polls and how it's progressing as uh, campaigning comes to a close today, we are joined by DD India's Debiandu Mondal from Assam and also Anne Barson is joining me uh, from Chennai. First to you, Debiandu, give us what uh, the flavor on the last day of campaigning in Assam is where you are. Uh, well, Amritpal, you know, we are, of course, uh, just few hours away from uh, the campaigning, which, uh, in fact, few hours away from the beginning of the mute period, uh, when uh, no political parties will be allowed to campaign any further. This is as per the model code of conduct rules of the Election Commission of India. But, uh, you know, here uh, I'm currently at the Jorhat constituency in the Upper Assam region, which is going to polls on the 19th of April. Uh, uh, while Gaurav Gogoi, the Congress candidate, is campaigning uh, somewhere around 100 kilometers uh, away from where I am currently in the Majuli uh, district in Upper Assam, uh, Himanto Biswa Sarma, the Chief Minister of BJP, is expected to visit Jorhat uh, by this afternoon. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the senior leaders are giving their last push uh, during the last few hours left uh, for the uh, for their respective candidates uh, here in Assam. Uh, remember, there are five seats which are going to polls in this first phase of the election here in Assam. So, of course, uh, you know, the political parties have campaigned uh, over the last couple of weeks and put in their best effort. Now it is up to the people uh, who they would like to elect uh, their leaders and send them to the Indian parliament in Delhi. So, of course, uh, the last push till 6 p.m. is the last deadline. Uh, uh, for campaigning here uh, for the first phase across India. So here in Assam, the political parties are, uh, you know, uh, going on full throttle uh, with their campaign during the last few hours uh, of the campaigning period that is left currently. So uh, in, in a few uh, few hours, if not hours, in a few, hmm. uh, uh, you know, uh, minutes from now, uh, we'll see the Chief Minister Himanto Biswa Sarma here in Jorhat campaigning uh, for uh, Topon Gogoi, who is the candidate that will be contesting, uh, the BJP candidate, in fact, will be contesting against the Congress's uh, the Gaurav Gogoi, who is also uh, the son of the former Chief Minister of, uh, uh, Uttra, uh, I beg your pardon, of Assam, uh, Tarun Gogoi. So, of course, uh, you know, the last few uh, uh, hours left for the campaigning, political parties are uh, uh, you know, okay. uh, pushing their last bit hmm. uh, for the campaigning uh, to conclude here in Assam. Back to you. Uh, Anbarsan, I'll come to you in a moment. Uh, let me continue with Devindu. Devindu, uh, okay, you've told me, understandably, the political uh, leaders, the campaigners are will give the last minute push before it comes, the campaigning comes to a close at 6 p.m. as you told us uh, this evening. But when you talk to the people, you were also in Arunachal, uh, you've toured extensively, uh, Sam extensively. What do the people say? What What is weighing on their minds when they go to vote on the 19th of this month? 
Oh, well, Amrit, uh, you know, we have been in Arunachal, but, uh, you know, they, we have received mixed responses from Arunachal Pradesh. Okay. Uh, but here in Assam, it seems uh, we have been to, uh, uh, in fact, four of the five constituencies uh, that are going to polls here. And it seems that the BJP here has an upper hand against the Congress. Uh, but uh, having said this, you know, uh, there, there could be two... Uh, seats interesting where the contest between uh, the BJP and the Congress will be a tough contest where uh, this particular seat, the Jorhat uh, constituency where I am currently, uh, it is, as I said, Tarun Gogoi, the former chief minister's son, is contesting against uh, uh, Topon Gogoi of the BJP. So Gaurav Gogoi is a young leader. He is uh, pretty famous here amongst the youth. I've, I've been talking to a couple of youth since morning, uh, since I'm in Jorhat since this morning. Uh, so the youth seems to be behind Gaurav Gogoi. But uh, also, having said this, uh, you know, a lot of women voters seem to be mm -hmm. uh, with the BJP because of the fact that, uh, you know, they have received uh, several of the schemes of the central government, such as the Swanidhi schemes, okay. such as the PM Awas Yojana, uh, mm. cylinders, etc. So these schemes are, uh, you know, have reached the people here, mm -hmm. uh, even in the far off northeastern region, and people seem to be happy with the fact uh, that uh, you know this what this BJP government had done over the last five okay. years. Uh, okay. But also, uh, in, interestingly, uh, uh, just uh, I'll conclude in just a uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, So, Sarvananda Sonowal, Sarvananda Sonowal uh, in the Dibrugarh constituency will also uh, ha is contesting, uh, and it, it is not uh, going to be an easy uh, seat, uh, is what uh, we are being told. He's contesting against Lurinjuti Gogoi because. Uh, we had spent almost half a day with the tea garden workers in Dibrugarh and the tea garden workers constitute about 30% of the vote share uh, in that particular constituency. So, of course, uh, the tea garden workers, uh, you know, uh, had been demanding to raise their wage from 250 mm. to 350. And this, uh, many of us that we have spoken to have said that is a matter of concern amongst okay. the tea garden workers. But having said this, uh, you know, uh, 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 many from the uh, Dibrugarh constituency also say that, uh, you know, Sarbananda Sonowal of the BG BJP could have an upper edge, but of course, these two seats would be interesting to watch out for right. uh, uh, when the results on the 4th of June comes out, because uh, it is going to be a okay. tough contest for both the BJP and the Congress here. All right, uh, uh, Devendu. Okay, Anbarsan, Tamil Nadu election is very, very interesting this time. Give us the contours of the political landscape of the southern state. Yeah, this time Tamil Nadu is uh, going full on the first phase itself. All the 39 constituencies of Tamil Nadu, including Puducherry, the one constituency, the all 40 constituencies, they are going for the poll. The last day of uh, campaigning going to end in few hours. The political parties of all the three alliances, the DMK, ADMK and BJP, are in full, full swing to, for the election campaigning. Okay, okay. No, uh, uh, I think you've lost my connection so, or can you so hear me? Anbarsan, can you hear so, me? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, please go ahead. So, the election campaigning going to end in just few hours. All the three alliances are very much in full swing to reach the, the poll people and to get more vote on that. So, this election, it's a triangular fight, all the ADMK, DMK, BJP. So, before 2019 and 14, different from that. So the elections are in tight fight in all the most constituencies. Particularly, the BJP fielded a very star candidates in uh, uh, Coimbatore, uh, Virtanagar, and Chennai South and all. So all these constituencies having a tough fight. The MCC code is uh, the election commissioner has today uh, given a press brief and said that after the poll uh, campaign end at 6 p.m., the political parties need not to be campaigning even for the social media also. So okay. the election campaigning in across the uh, last 15 days, the national leaders of BJP, Congress and various national parties including DMK and ADMK are try to Giving attract the last more vote push. on that. Yeah. The political issues like Kachati has came and uh, the interaction between the Prime Minister said the dynastic politics of DMK and drug related issue. DMK said the union government, uh, the fund allocation. All these issues are raising up in this political campaigning. Even ADMK a uh, split uh, alliance with, uh, break alliance with the BJP in last minute uh, before January. So they also conducted a uh, political campaigning across Tamil Nadu. Uh, okay. Issues like uh, against the DMK family in dynastic 
and also the drug related All right. issues. So the political issues okay. are very much uh, bo uh, strengthened and uh, become a limelight of right. all the three alliances. And these issues pertaining to the people of Tamil Nadu are came up and across national level various uh, issues are rising up, the discussion on went on. So this political campaign going to end today Absolutely. and the, all the all right. six pro voters are hmm. going to poll on the uh, April 19th. Okay. So we need to fight and watch the political dynamics Absolutely. need to change because the BJP emerged as a third player in the state. Hmm. If should we we need to wait to see if they are catching up on the second or All right. getting on more. Okay, I'll on let both you guys, Anbarson and Devendu, go uh, go for the moment. But uh, before I let uh, do before I do that, let me tell you, you guys are doing a brilliant job covering the elections all across the country along with our other colleagues. Thank you, Devendu and Anbarson, for joining us for the moment on India News Hour. And still to come up on DD India News Hour. First seven jurors selected in Donald Trump's hush money criminal trial. Trump uh, trial judge conflicted. WikiLeaks founder uh, Julian Assange's extradition moves closer after US provides UK court with assurances. And Myanmar's uh, former leader Suu Kyi moves uh, move to house arrest. We just don't bring you the news as it unfolds, we get to the heart of the matter. We don't just present facts, we demystify complex social, political and economic events. We break stories that shape the world's present and future because you deserve the truth. I am Tanvi Taneja from New Delhi. I'm Oli Barrett from London. I'm Nick Harper from Washington DC. Join us on DD India Global Monday to Friday at these times. You're watching DD India News Hour. I'm Amrit Pal Singh. Israel's war cabinet is expected to meet again uh, today to decide on its response to Iran's first ever direct attack on Israel's uh, soil. The war cabinet has met multiple times since Iran launched more than 300 missiles and drones towards Israel on Saturday night. In fact, they've met every other day to mull over what their response should be or what the military retaliation uh, should be because there is a lot of pressure, diplomatic pressure from around the world to contain Israel at least for the moment so that uh, tensions do not escalate. And amid the escalating tensions in the West, uh, in West Asia, UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has urged calm during a phone call with his, his Israeli counterpart Benjamin Netanyahu. Sunak told Netanyahu that any escalation will only worsen the security situation in the region. UK Prime Minister also said that Iran badly miscalculated and was increasingly isolated on the global stage. The US is planning to impose new sanctions targeting Iran's missile and drone programs in the coming days. National Security Advisor of the United States, uh, Jake Sullivan, said that uh, President Joe Biden is coordinating with the allies on a comprehensive response against Iran. He added that Washington continues to work to, to further strengthen and expand integration of air and missile defense and early warning systems across West Asia to further erode the effectiveness of Iran's missile and UAV capabilities. And uh, European Union's foreign policy chief, uh, Joseph uh, Borrell, sa has said that Brussels is starting to uh, work on expanding sanctions against Iran after Tehran's attack on Israel. Speaking after an emergency online meeting of EU foreign ministers, Borrell said that the bloc would look into toughening measures against Iran's supplies of weaponry, including drones, to Russia and proxy groups around West Asia. First, as expected, everybody a strong condemnation of the Iranian attack, a strong unity about it. Also, the member states reaffirm 
their commitment, the commitment of the European Union to Israel's security. And third, we remain united in the objective of uh, avoid further escalation and call all actors to show restraint. After this meeting, uh, we will increase our outreach with the key partners in the region and some member states propose the adoption of uh, uh, expand the restrictive measures against Iran, adopting an expansion of restrictive measures against Iran. I will send to the External Action Service the request to start the necessary work related to these sanctions. But uh, the Israeli military campaign is still on. Amid escalating tensions in West Asia, our top Hezbollah commander was killed by an Israeli strike on Lebanon. Ismail Baz was among the three people killed in the strike which hit a moving vehicle. According to Israeli army, he was the commander of Hezbollah's coastal sector and was involved in planning rocket and anti-tank uh, tank missile attacks on Israel. And Didi India's uh, Sarah Coates joins us uh, for more on from uh, Tel Aviv. Sarah, tell us uh, when can we expect an Israeli response if there is any or is it a, a, a staggered response still on? Hello. It really is a matter of when, not if, we see this Israeli response. Of course, Israel cannot stand by and allow some 300 missiles and drones to be fired into the country without doing anything. Now, a senior Israeli official speaking to Hebrew media, a person that's very close to these ongoing war cabinet and security cabinet discussions, has come out to say that right now Israel's plan is to really uh, keep Iran guessing as to what it's going to do. Now, we of course do not know what the Israeli war cabinet is actually planning, but there is widespread belief here that what we could see is some sort of an attack against military installments, because really now the last thing that Israel wants to do is to hurt any or kill any civilians, given that it's garnered a lot of support in the wake of this attack. But what we do need to remember here is that the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, he is under a lot of international pressure from allies like the United States to keep this response moderate, to keep calm in the region, to prevent a wider escalation. But domestically also, he is under a lot of pressure, especially uh, when it comes to the far right wing elements in his government who also sit on the security cabinet. People like uh, Betzalel Smotrich and Itamar Ben Gavir, they are calling on Netanyahu to really hit Iran with everything it has. So certainly a lot of pressure here on uh, Israel to respond. As I mentioned, uh, we don't know when this is going to happen, but certainly we can expect an Israeli response. Sarah, you've been in Tel Aviv for long covering this war right from the beginning when the, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 when uh, Hamas uh, first struck them in the, on the 7th of October. What is your sense when you say they will hit military installations? Would it be at the proxies like they're doing in uh, southern Lebanon? Or could it be as far as Iran, in Iran and say in Yemen? Well, certainly one of the strategies, of course, could be to hit these proxies, uh, especially given what we've been seeing in the north since October 7, are these daily tit-for-tat escalations, these daily attacks from Hezbollah into these Israeli communities. Even early this morning, rocket alert sirens have been ringing out in the north, Hezbollah firing a number of rockets over that blue line, uh, really targeting army bases. Israel has been striking Hezbollah facilities over overnight and also shelling at these launch sites early today. So certainly uh, one of the uh, potential things we could see here is uh, not a direct hit on Iranian soil, but of course hitting these proxies, uh, which are becoming increasingly aggressive by the day. But what we do need to remember at the same time is there is still an ongoing war in 
the Gaza Strip. Uh, the Israeli military announcing that over the last 24 hours, it's hit some 40 targets in Gaza. And these are things like rocket launches, also booby-trapped buildings and underground facilities. And there are reports coming in from the ground that some 20 people in Gaza have been killed. There are also, of course, eyes on this uh, potential military uh, incursion into down into that southern city of Rafa, which is reportedly on hold now after this unprecedented Iranian attack. But there really uh, is a lot happening, of course, on all fronts here. And we do need to remember uh, that many of these reservists that were initially called up, some 300,000 people at the beginning of the war, uh, they have since been put on leave. So certainly a lot for the war cabinet and also, of course, the security cabinet to discuss here. Uh, but as I did mention, uh, there will potentially be a, a retaliation on Iran. It's not if, but when. All right, Sarah Coates, uh, many thanks for joining us uh, from Tel Aviv to, share the, uh, to give us these updates. Thank you. And G7 foreign ministers are heading to Italy's Capri for a meeting as a group uh, mulls imposing sanctions on Iran. The meeting brings together the foreign ministers of the United States, Italy, Canada, France, Germany, Japan and the United Kingdom and of course the European Union. And concerns about China helping Russia build up its military strength are also expected to be discussed at this meeting. All right, uh, changing tack to the U.S. politics. Meanwhile, U.S. Republican-led House of Representatives would, vo would vote this week on advancing the long-stalled national security spending package to uh, aid Israel, Ukraine and other American allies. It comes days after Iran launched a large aerial attack on Israel, amplifying calls for the Congress to move quickly to approve the pending aid bill. Lawmakers would vote separately on a bill providing money for Israel, one allocating funding for Ukraine, and a third with aid for Taiwan and other allies. After two days of uh, jury selection, the first seven jurors were selected on Tuesday to serve on Donald Trump's hush money criminal trial. The judge also warned lawyers that he would not tolerate any efforts to intimidate prospective jurors after saying that Trump was audibly muttering while one of the possible members of the panel was questioned. Trump faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records to cover a hush money payment to an adult star shortly before the 2016 election. Trump has pleaded not guilty and denies an encounter took place. Trump spoke out against the judge overseeing his New York criminal trial, repeatedly calling him conflicted and saying he should not be there. I heard 78% think it's a rigged deal. And it is a rigged deal. It's a rigged trial. Our courts, everything is screwed up in New York. And the whole world is watching. This judge is so conflicted. You understand that. You'll take a look at that. There's never been a judge so conflicted as this. It's ridiculous. And also, there's no crime. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden kicked off a multi-city tour uh, of the battleground state of Pennsylvania with a stop in his hometown of uh, Scotton, where he renewed calls to increase taxes on wealthy Americans and large corporations. Biden is seeking to boost sagging opinion poll numbers for his handling of the U.S. economy by contrasting his plan to impose higher taxes on Americans, making more than 400,000 with his Republican rival Donald Trump's promise to preserve his 2017 slashing of the corporate tax rate. Biden is also pushing for middle-class tax cuts. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange's extradition, extradition moves closer as the U.S. has provided the United Kingdom court with assurances. The assurances have now been submitted by a deadline which fell on Tuesday last month. Uh, the High Court in London ruled that without certain U.S. guarantees, Assange would uh, be allowed to launch a new appeal against being extradited to uh, face 18 charges in a U.S. trial, he could seek a First Amendment right to free speech and there was no prospect of, a new, char of new charges which could see the death penalty being imposed. 
Myanmar's detained ex-leader uh, Aung San Suu Kyi has been moved from prison to house arrest. The military government said that the decision was taken as a health measure due to heat wave. According to the junta spokesperson Suu Kyi, who is about 78 years old, and uh, Win Mint, the 72-year-old uh, former president of her ousted government, were among the elderly and infirm prisoners moved from out of the prison because of the severe heat wave. And still to come on DD India News R, election fever grips the entire nation. Stay with us as we get you a report on Central India's Chhattisgarh. Indian security forces kill, uh, kill at least 29 Naxals in Chhattisgarh. is our responsibility. This is a big fight between uh, BJP and uh, India alliance. Will you vote? Ah, vote on. We are power of democracy. This is a huge. BJP is trying her best, you know, for the past 10 years under the flagship of uh, Sri Narendra Modi Garden. The 2024 Lok Sabha polls in Tamil Nadu are witnessing the battle royale between DMK, AIA DMK and the BJP. You're watching DD India News R. I'm Amrit Pal Singh. And uh, going through uh, the headlines once again, the last day of campaigning for the first phase of India's general elections, 102 parliamentary constituencies to go to polls on April 19th. Israel War Cabinet to meet again today. US and the European Union mull fresh sanctions against Tehran. The United Arab Emirates is hit by the heaviest rainfall ever, surpasses all records. Dubai roads shut, airport submerged. Chhattisgarh in Central India was formed out of Madhya Pradesh to become the Indian Union's 26th state. It's also known as the Rice Bowl of India. The Hindi heartland in India's 10th largest state and a major producer of energy and steel. Let's understand why Chhattisgarh matters as India decides in 2024. Chhattisgarh, the landlocked state in central India is known for its lush green stretches of forest covers, breathtaking natural beauty, diverse tribal heritage and rich mineral deposits. Home to people from 42 different tribes, the cultural life of Chhattisgarh comprises varied forms of traditional art and crafts. Tribal dances, folk songs, regional festivals and fairs and amusing cultural fests. In fact, Chhattisgarh's Dhokra art Inspired by tribal themes of animals, mythical creatures, human creatures, natural shapes, etc., is now quite popular beyond the borders of India. Spreads over 135,000 square kilometers, the state is also known as the bowl of rice as the region grows over 20,000 varieties of rice. Chhattisgarh shares its borders with seven Indian states. Originally a part of Madhya Pradesh, it was carved out and granted statehood on November 1, 2000 with Raipur as its designated state capital. With 11 seats in the Lok Sabha or the lower house of the Indian Parliament, Chhattisgarh is going to the general elections in three phases between April 19th to May 7th. The state's 20.5 million registered voters are ready to exercise their electoral duty. Out of the total number of voters, 10.1 million are male, while about 10.3 million are female. About 732 voters are from the third gender category. The state is currently governed by the Bharatiya Janata Party, 
which backed a majority support in the state elections held in December 2023. The major parties in the state are the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Indian National Congress. The other political parties which have been contesting in the state as well as national elections here are the Janata Congress Chhattisgarh, Gondwana Ganatantra Party and the Bahujan Samaj Party. In the 2019 general elections, the Bharatiya Janata Party won nine seats with a vote share of 51.40% and the Indian National Congress bagged two seats. In the backdrop of a dramatic comeback in recently held state elections by the BJP, all eyes are keenly looking forward to the general election contest when arch-rival Congress and BJP once again lock horns in a two-party fight. Antra Sinha for DD India. And with polls in Kerala, just uh, uh, days ahead, DD India caught up with NDA's candidate Rajiv Chandrasekhar, who is a sitting minister in the outgoing government. Uh, he's facing uh, Congress's Shashi Tharoor in the Thiruvananthapuram Lok Sabha constituency. Let's find out what he promises to the people of his constituency. Listen in. We are in Trivantrum uh, parliamentary constituencies where a very tight triangular fight is witnessed this time up against Shashi Tharoor, the Congress MP who has already gained a hat trick in Lok Sabha constituency. The NDA candidate, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, is posing a mighty challenge this time. And joining us today is Rajiv Chandrasekhar himself. And let's ask him directly his confidence about this poll. Uh, sir, um, as, as we said earlier, uh, Shashi Tharoor has a huge lead last time, especially in the context of him winning a hat-trick in Trivandrum. Right. What do you think has changed in the attitude of Trivandrum that will tip in the favor <coughs> of NDA? No, what has clearly changed uh, is, uh, is not so much uh, change as much as people becoming aware that uh, under the Prime Ministership of Narendra Modi ji over the last 10 years, India has moved so much ahead, while Trivandrum and Kerala have remained uh, stagnant and in some case arguably also moved backward. Uh, so people are wanting change, people want also the, the youth, the women, the fishing community, the agricultural community, all of them want to also enjoy the same prosperity, the same development the rest of the in, uh, country is enjoying. So the issue is simply this, that uh, the last 15 years, uh, Tiruvandavaram has not moved forward. There has been very little uh, development in Tiruvandavaram except for what the central government has done. And the people uh, want change. People want to move forward. People want opportunity to grow and develop and uh, that is where the NDA and Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji's track record comes into, into uh, play. And uh, let's uh, go over to Maharashtra now. My colleague Shishir Shalar joins us uh, from Nagpur. Shishir, as campaigning comes to a close uh, this evening for the first phase, what are the issues that are weighing on the minds of uh, people of Maharashtra in where you are in Nagpur, what are the issues that concern them? Well, absolutely. Now, just few hours left uh, for the campaigning to end here hmm. uh, in Maharashtra. And in Maharashtra, for the first phase, nearly uh, five constituencies going for the poll. And those all constituencies belong to Eastern Vidarbha region. Uh, as you are aware, that Eastern Vidarbha region uh, is one of the important regions from Maharashtra's perspective. And not just that, we have seen some of the big names coming from the Vidarbha region. Hmm. Uh, of course, uh, the Nitin Gadkari, Indian Minister Nitin Gadkari, belongs to Vidarbha. Uh, the current uh, Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra, Devendra Fadnavis, also belongs to uh, uh, Vidarbha region also. Uh, Sudhir Mungantivar, who is also a contestant from Chandrapur, uh, and Maharashtra's Environment Minister, is also uh, you know, is from Vidarbha. So obviously, the big name coming in from Vidarbha, and that's the reason for the campaigning. We have seen a host of uh, star campaigners from both the sides, from the NDA and from the Indi Alliance, uh, were camping. Uh, you know, you know, in Eastern Vidarbha region since last few days here. And as we uh, you know, move ahead, probably next uh, couple of hours, we'll see that the poll uh, will come to an, uh, the, the campaign will come to an end. And that's the reason the issue, if you talk about, uh, Amrit, let me tell you that uh, Vidarbha, uh, once known as, you know, as very uh, uh, underdeveloped uh, region. And that's the reason, even though, uh, you know, a lot of mineral rich uh, region this has to be. But in spite of that, we haven't seen a big development here. And that's the reason people started comparing that what they've got since uh, last 10 years and what they've got during the UPA terms. Uh, well, the results were quite clear. We spoke to most of the people here and they 
uh, are of the view that probably yes, uh, the you no know, the infrastructure development and the overall development is actually at place. They're looking forward, but in spite of that, uh, there are other more issues actually uh, concerns people. For example, the employment and inflation needs to be con uh, controlled here. Empl the employment possibly should be increased in the Vidarbha region. Obviously, government is working in that direction. So these are the issues that concern people and probably when people go in mind, they will absolutely see to it that what exactly they got in the last 10 years and probably what uh, you know, their demands are. And at the same time, they also see the representation from there and that whom they're going to uh, you know, elect. Uh, is he you know, uh, you know, quite uh, strong enough to you know, present uh, their voice in the parliament, probably com complete the demands uh, from the government? That also people will see to it. And that's the reason, even though big names are in free, ultimately the issues remain the same. And the people will definitely think on it whether uh, whom to choose and whether the candidate will be able uh, to satisfy mm. the demands or not. So that is a major question lies here. All right. We'll have to wait and watch uh, what comes out of it. But uh, Maharashtra's political uncertainty has made this a very interesting contest this time around. And that's why you see this high decibel political drama being played out. Shishir, uh, thank you for tracking us, uh, tracking that and joining us for the moment. And uh, in one of the largest operations by security forces in Chhattisgarh, 29 Naxals were killed in an encounter in the Kanker district in central Indian state of Chhattisgarh on Tuesday. This figure could go up as a search operation is still on. Chhattisgarh police uh, is saying that. According to officials, if the figure crosses 30 casualties from the Naxal side, this would be the largest operation by the forces in the past 10 years. Inspector General of Police in the Buster Range of Chhattisgarh said that the bodies of uh, 29 Naxals were recovered. Three security personnel who were injured in the operation are now out of danger and their treatment continues. Yesterday an encounter took place between security forces and the Naxalites which lasted for around four hours. Teams of DRG and BSF cordoned off the area and as a result 29 CPI Maoist bodies were recovered, out of which 15 were female and 14 were male. Arms and ammunition were recovered in large quantities from the spot. The autopsy of the bodies of the Maoists are underway. Now let's now take a look at other stories making news. A high-tech IT laboratory was inaugurated at the Uzbek Academy of Armed Forces to strengthen bilateral ties between India and Uzbekistan. The laboratory is equipped with the state-of-art technology, uh, including nine rooms which house two lecture halls. The establishment is expected to enrich the training resources available to Uzbek Armed Forces and foster a deeper understanding and cooperation between India and Uzbekistan in the years to come. Rescue and search operations are underway in uh, uh, Gandbal Naugam area of Srinagar uh, as six people died after a boat capsized in the Jhelum River on Tuesday. Three people are still missing. As per the Divisional Commissioner of Srinagar, six bodies have been found so far. Odisha government has announced the closure of schools for three days due to heat wave on Wednesday. A government notification said that all schools, both government and private, will remain closed for a period of three days till April 20th as the region is currently sizzling under severe heatwave conditions. The maximum temperature at most places has crossed 30 degrees Celsius. And devotees uh, continue to throng Mata Vaishno Devi temple in Katra of Jammu and Kashmir on the occasion of Ram Nomi. The temple is beautifully decorated with flowers as it is considered as one of the holiest pilgrimages for the Hindus. And uh, UAE uh, has been hit by the heaviest rainfall uh, event ever recorded in the country, surpassing all data collected since 1949. So that makes it uh, the heaviest rainfall in the past 75 years. The downpour affected numerous regions across UAE over the past 24 hours. 
A further rainfall is expected to continue for the next few hours. The Dubai International Airport has advised passengers to avoid traveling to the airport unless absolutely necessary. So far, one death has been reported from the Emirate of Ras Al Khaimah. And uh, in U uh, UAE's neighbor Oman, at least 19 people have died in floods triggered by three consecutive days of heavy rains. Local media has reported that more rains are expected on Wednesday. Meanwhile, rescue work is underway with police airlifting people from flooded areas. Uh, severe floods continue to wreak uh, havoc in Kazakhstan and Russia as well. Video footage showed houses and roads in Kazakhstan submerged uh, in flood waters. According to officials, almost 117,000 people have been evacuated due to floods in the region. More evacuations are underway in North uh, Kazakhstan, uh, Aktobe, West Kazakhstan regions. However, 16,000 people have also settled back in their homes as water receded in some regions. And the water level in the Tobol River around the city of Kurgan in Russia's south uh, uh, Urals is expected to uh, uh, exceeded the dangerous level mark on Wednesday. According to the officials, over 660 uh, residential houses were flooded in the region. Evacuations are underway in the region. And still to come up on DD India News, uh, the Indian economy is projected to grow at 6.8% for the financial year 24-25. And in the Champions League thriller, Paris Saint-Germain and uh, Borussia Dortmund set up the semi-final clash. As a cycle of accountability returns, the time has come when the biggest democracy chooses to write another chapter in its glorious history. Development, justice, regionalism, a big political canvas. Everything will be put to test in this mega battle for glory. DD India dissects what makes elections 2024 the battle royale in Indian politics. Data and analysis, free from bias, to help you understand why India matters. The Great Indian Election on weekdays at 8.30 p.m. only on TV India. You're watching DD India News Hour. I'm Amrit Pal Singh. The International Monetary Fund or IMF has increased India's growth forecast for 2024 in its World Economic Outlook report. The latest forecast comes from IMF's spring meetings, which are an opportunity to uh, assess how economies are faring amid a variety of global pressures. Nick Harper reports from Washington. Well, the International Monetary Fund says it's been surprised by a high level of resiliency. It's better than expected data shows that many global markets are rebounding in a post-pandemic world. India comes out as one of the star performers, remaining as it does as one of the countries with the best forecasts. The IMF has increased its prediction for 2024 growth, boosting it by 0.3%, now forecasting that India will see 6.8% growth this year. The IMF says growth is projected to remain strong in the country in 2024, with the robustness reflecting continuing strength in domestic demand and rising work age population. From a global perspective, the World Economic Outlook forecasts 3.2% global growth this year. One area of particular weakness is China's property sector. The IMF warns that without a government-led restructuring package, the sector will drag down growth in China even further over the next year or so. Growth for this year is forecast for 4.6%. The spring meetings taking place here in Washington, D.C. this week have also highlighted a strengthening U.S. economy. The IMF saying that increased employment and significant consumer spending could help to boost global growth over the coming year. But there is a warning for the US Federal Reserve and other central banks. 
Following a period of increased interest rates, the IMF now says it'll be up to central bankers to reduce rates gradually to prevent tipping economies into recession and achieving instead that hoped-for soft landing. Nick Harper in Washington, reporting for DD India. And following International Monetary Fund's growth forecast for India, IMF's Executive Director Krishnamurti V. Subramanian on uh, Tuesday said that India will continue to be a key driver for global growth in the foreseeable future. Subramanian uh, noted that India has witnessed consistent uh, growth above 7% since COVID-19 uh, pandemic. He predicted that India will have an 8% growth in the fourth quarter and called it a good growth considering the current global economic situation. I think India will continue to be the, uh, you know, driver for global growth um, in the foreseeable future, you know, maximum sort of contributor to, to global growth. Um, I uh, expect, you know, growth uh, for India to be consistently above 7%, you know, in this decade. You would recall, um, you know, in, back in September 2021, you know, when I was with the government as well, actually, I predicted that India will, you know, uh, emerging out of COVID will have 7% plus growth. So I continue to maintain, uh, you know, that, that, that assessment. And uh, now it's time for sports updates. And, and uh, my colleague uh, Mark Lynn joins us uh, for more on that. Mark, tell us what's making news in the world of sports. Well, uh, we're going to give you news on football, cricket, uh, tennis. So let's see what's, what okay. we've got. Uh, Paris Saint Germain's uh, Kylian Mbappe scored twice in the second half to help guide his side to a 4 1 comeback win at 10-man uh, Barcelona in their Champions League quarterfinal second leg and they wrapped up a 6-4 aggregate victory on Tuesday. Uh, Rafinha uh, gave Barca a lead in the 12th minute while PSG's Osmane Dembele fired home for the visitors in the 40th to equalize. 14 minutes later, Vithina put uh, them ahead with a strike from the edge of the box on the 54th and Joao Cancelo uh, fouled Dembele in the 61st minute to concede a penalty that Mbappe fired into the top corner. And with this win, PSG has now set up a semi-final place against Borussia Dortmund. And Borussia Dortmund, uh, they stormed into the Champions League semi-finals with a rip-roaring 4-2 home win over Atletico Madrid on Tuesday. That saw them fight back from a 2-1 defeat in the first leg to win the Tie 5-4 on aggregate. Julian Brandt put Dortmund level on aggregate in the 34th minute. And five minutes later, Dortmund took the lead in the quarterfinal tie as Ian Masten uh, cut in from the left and drilled a perfectly placed shot in at the foot of the far post. Dortmund had not reached the last four of the Champions League since they finished runners-up in 2012-13. This is just the fourth time that uh, the German club have advanced beyond the quarterfinals. Cricket news now. Uh, Gujarat Titans are set to host Delhi Capitals today at the Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad. And Shubman Gill, uh, GT's highest uh, run-getter so far, has led them from the front. Another positive for the Titans is Rashid Khan returning to form. Rashid had started this IPL with four wickets at 36.25 and an economy of 9.06, far below his stellar performances. But Capital brought their campaign back um, on track, beating Lucknow Super Giants last week. And uh, Jake Fraser McGrook starred with a 50 in the game, while Kuldeep Yadav returned uh, from an injury and also had a good game. The hosts currently stand at number six in the points table whereas Rishabh Pant-led Delhi Capitals are in the ninth position. Both teams have played six matches each, and uh, GT have won three. DC have won uh, only two matches. And uh, the torch for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games was lit in the ancient Olympia in a traditional ceremony on Tuesday, marking the final stretch of the seven-year preparations for the Games start on July 26. Greek actress Mary Mina playing the role of the high priestess, lit the torch using a backup flame instead of a parabolic mirror that is normally used due to cloudy skies for the start of a re relay in Greece and France. 
It will culminate with the lighting of the Olympic flame in the French capital at the opening ceremony. Paris will host the Summer Olympics for a third time after 1900 and 1924. Well, that sums it up, uh, Amrit. What about, what do you think happened in sports? You like it? Yeah, absolutely. The Champions League's getting uh, interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you, Mark, for that update. And uh, moving on now, uh, Indian President Draupadi Murmu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi extended their greetings to the countrymen on the auspicious occasion of Ram Nami. Ram Nami marks the conclusion of the ninth day festivities of the Hindus. During these nine days, devotees worship nine forms of Ma Durga and observe the fast. The day holds special significance among Hindus, which falls on the ninth day of the Chaitra month, the first month of in the Hindu lunar calendar. The Hindu festival of Chaitra Navratri is uh, celebrated with vigor, fervor, pomp and enthusiasm across the country. Ma Siddhi Dhatri is worshipped on uh, Mahanami of uh, Chaitri, uh, Chaitra Navratri. And Prime Minister Modi also shared the glimpse of him watching Ram Lalla Surya Tilak, Tilak ceremony virtually and mentioned that this is a very emotional moment for him. And the newly built Ram Temple in Uttar, Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh's Ayodhya is all decked up for Ram Nomi celebrations. This year the auspicious occasion was more special by Surya Tilak of Ram Lalla when the sun rays fell on the forehead of the deity's idol at noon. Devotees thronged in large numbers to get a glimpse of the deity. The festival, festivities fall on the ninth day of the Chaitra month, marking the birth of Lord Ram. And uh, I'm joined uh, by my colleague Ajay Mishra, who joins us from Ayodhya. Ajay, you understand these issues well, not only understand, uh, you enjoy it also. Give us a sense of what it is there. Amrit, uh, thank you very much and uh, happy no uh, Ram Naomi uh, to uh, you and your viewers. Uh, uh, to start with, I just want to show you that the red carpet has been laid for the pilgrims for the first time. Uh, I, I, cannot uh, I cannot remember uh, when this kind of red carpet uh, welcome was uh, laid out uh, for the pilgrims because uh, it's, it's a scorching heat, almost 39 degrees here in uh, Shri Ayodhya Dham and, uh, uh, and the Surya Tilak that you were uh, uh, mentioning about has been a brilliant, brilliant celestial phenomena. Uh, which the, which way the Ayodhya and the pilgrims have uh, seen for the very first time. We understand that there are there are two great institutes of India. One in the Indian Institute of uh, Astrophysics based in Bangalore, and another is the IIT Roorkee. These two institutions have made it possible. Uh, there were uh, uh, four mirrors and two lenses, uh, has, um, uh, which were used for this uh, for this uh, phenomenal. Uh, uh, showcase of uh, science, uh, uh, you know, mixed with the uh, spirituality, uh, which which led to this uh, very special Surya Tilak. And if you can, if I can borrow uh, the words from the Secretary DST uh, uh, Department of Science and Technology, this event is going to be repeated every year. That's very important to understand that for the very first time, as the temple is not uh, fully completed now, the the experts modified the design to suit the existing structure and perform the image optimization. This is a very special uh, phenomena, not new uh, to the Indian architect, <coughs> but new to this uh, Ram temple because the, the, the temple is not uh, fully completed yet and that's why there has been a great effort from the scientist uh, with the design uh, and, and the execution of this Surya Tilak. It has been phenomenal and it is very well received by the pilgrims out here. We understand that there are almost uh, 25 lakh uh, pilgrims which are being uh, welcomed here in Ayodhya by Ayodhya Development Authority and uh, ample number of you know uh, facilities have, have been uh, provided to them. We understand that uh, there are hospitals inside, there are camps, uh, medical camps uh, uh, inside. Those who uh, who are uh, who are having uh, okay. you know uh, who are observing fast on this very special day, they are giving, they are being given food inside the temple. And sure. and, and I think the root diversion uh, plan has has played a very important role to manage this magnificent uh, uh, you know mass uh, 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 mass arrival of the pilgrims out here in okay. Shri Ayodhya Dham. So we understand that uh, people come here. Uh, to, to celebrate this great uh, festivity of Sri Nam uh, Naomi, which is the uh, birth, okay. birthday of the of the Lord Rama, and uh, this this is a historical day for for the pilgrims. And Absolutely, 
Ajay, I'm afraid I'll have to stop you here because I'm totally out of time. Otherwise, I would have loved to, you know, uh, tell us, uh, you tell us how the celebrations of Ram Nami are being celebrated at uh, Ayodhya uh, at the Ram Temple. Well, uh, that's it in this edition of DD India News Hour. But let us know your thoughts on the news of the day. For those of uh, you on the go, you can get all the latest news and updates from India and across the world from DD India's mobile app. The app is available both on Android and iOS platforms. Scan the QR code uh, on your screens right now to download that. And we'll be back with more news as it breaks here on DD India. I'm Amrit Pal Singh and from all my team here in Delhi, thanks for watching. Namaskar.